Okay, ladies and gentlemen, back to some trig identities now. We've already talked about a number of them, reciprocal, uh, quotient, Pythagorean, numerous identities, odd even. <clears throat> in this case, we're going to start dealing with sum and difference identities. Now, previously, you only had x. So, for example, cosine x equals 1 over secant x, or sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. Um, or tangent of theta equals sine theta over cosine theta. In this case, we're actually going to have two different angles going on because what we need to do is we need to find something where we can si find the sine of 15 degrees. Up to this point, we've used our special triangles and our quadrantal angles, 0, 90, 180, 273, 60, and we found all the possibilities. But in this case, I have 15 degrees. We don't have a standard memorizable triangle for 15 degrees. So what we're going to need to do is we need to take the 15, we need to put it in terms of something that we do know. So for example, I could rewrite sine of 15 degrees as the sine of 45 minus 30. Uh, that would equal 45 minus 30 because you do parentheses first would equal 15. Now that's not the only way to do this. Okay, we could do uh, another sort. We could say uh, that's the same as the sine of 60 minus 45. That also would be 15. I could say that's the sine of 135 minus 120. That would also make 15. You'll notice in this case alpha is bigger than beta. So it, all we're doing is we're finding a way to redefine 15 as a sum or difference of two different angles that we don't otherwise know. So, for example, if I wanted the cosine of 75 degrees, cosine of 75 degrees could be written as the cosine of 30 plus 45. Okay. It could also be um, 120 minus 60, I believe. Yeah, 120 minus 60. Nope, that wouldn't work. 135 minus 60. That would make uh, 75 as well. So the idea here is we're coming up with two combos that make whatever it is we're looking for. But in all cases, it doesn't frankly matter. We're going to use one of these two formulas here. Now, the nice thing about these two formulas is they're not that hard to remember. Cosine of alpha plus or minus beta, cosine alpha, cosine beta, minus plus. You'll notice this is plus minus, this is minus plus, because when this is a plus over here, this is a minus over here. And likewise, when this is a minus over here, it's a plus over here. So these two signs are backwards of one another. Sine alpha, sine beta. But down here, plus minus, plus minus, they are the same. So let's see if we can knock this guy out right here. Sine 45 minus 30. So I'm going to use the sine, and it's a minus. So I'm going to say sine 45 cosine 30. Now, since this is minus, sine is the same, minus cosine 45 sine 30. Uh, if I were to come down here and do it, it would be the same thing. But in this case, I say, well, let's see here. I have 30 and 45, so let's draw two pictures, 45, 1, 1, root 2. I have 30 degrees. 1, 2, root 3, that's for 30. I say sine 45. Sine 45 is 1 over root 2. Cosine of 30 is root 3 over 2. Minus cosine 45, well that's 1 over root 2. Sine of 30, that's 1 over 2. Now, at this point, that's your answer, but we need to simplify. Well, I can see that I have 2 root 2 as my denominator. On top, I have 1 times root 3 is root 3, and 1 times 1 is 1. That is my answer. And at this point, remember, you do not have to rationalize. If you did rationalize, it would be easy enough to multiply top and bottom by root 2 and say root 6 minus root 2 all over 4. That would be fine. Nothing wrong with that, but either answer is fine. So all you really need to do is find a combo that makes the angle you're looking for. Use your special triangles to fill in the blank. Let's go ahead and do one more down here. Uh, 135 minus 60 is 75, so let's go ahead and use that guy. 
So we say cosine 135, cosine 60. Now, since this is minus, it's going to be plus sine 135, sine 60. All right, let's draw them out. 135 is 1, negative 1, root 2. This is 60, so it is root 3, 1, and 2. And we say cosine 135 is negative 1 over root 2. Cosine 60 is 1 over 2 plus sine 135, 1 over root 2. Cosine, or sine 60 is root 3 over 2. And your answer is negative 1 plus root 3 all over 2 root 2. There it is. It is that simple. Okay, now. Sine and cosine aren't the only ones that can be added and subtracted. <clears throat> we also have tangent of alpha plus or minus beta equals tangent of alpha plus or minus beta 1 minus plus tan alpha tan beta. So the top sign is the same and the bottom sign will be opposite. Top So plus plus minus 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 plus. Now we could do tan of 165 again. Um, Probably the easiest thing here would be to say tan of 120 plus 45. And so in this case, you're going to say tan 120 plus or uh, Now, since this is plus, it's just going to be plus tan 45 all over 1 minus tan 120 tan 45. Not a big challenge. Draw the two triangles. 120, 45, 1, 1, root 2, and um, come up with an answer. So, uh, with that, you got 120, so you got 60, you got root 3, you got negative 1, you got 2. Okay, now, you can finish that one at this point. Over here, we have the opposite problem. We've already been given something that's in this side of the equation, and I unfortunately don't know what tan of 32 degrees is, so I need to go back the other way. If I'm going back the other way, I need to say, well, wait a minute, what's alpha and what's beta? Well, in this spot, alpha would be 32 and beta would be 13, and since this is plus, it must be tan of alpha plus beta, so plus and plus, so I recognize my sine order, and so I say tan of 32 plus 13, well 32 plus 13 would be tan of 45, tangent of 45, the answer is 1. So you work it backwards. Now, the other thing we can do is take a look at some of these where they have finding exact values, but we could also do simplifying, verifying, and solving. So we've already done simplifying, verifying, and solving in previous modules. So let's do it now. It says simplify this mess. Well, you say, hmm, I'm looking at this and I have two arguments going on, so I know it's not a reciprocal property. I know it's not a Pythagorean or any of these up here. I have to have something where I have two different parts. Well, a sine and a cosine mix... A sine and a cosine mix on each piece says it's going to be a sine value of some sort. And since that's a plus, sine has to be a plus. So I know I'm going to use sine of alpha plus beta equals sine of 3y cosine y plus cosine 3y sine y. But that means alpha is 3y and beta is y. So I say sine of 3y plus y, the answer is sine of 4y, and that is simplified. Now, additionally, I can continue simplifying here. The difference is, although it's strange, it doesn't have to be a number to use the property. I have sine of something plus something else. So here's alpha, here's beta. So let's do it. Let's use the sine property. So sine alpha. And so it's going to be sine of sine inverse x and cosine of cosine. 
cosine inverse x. And since this is plus, this is plus, and it's going to be cosine of sine inverse x, sine cosine inverse x. All right, so with that, this and this cancel out, leaving x. This and this are also going to cancel out, leaving x plus. Now, unfortunately, we can't do a whole ton with this, so my answer is going to be x squared plus cosine sine inverse x and sine cosine inverse x. So, now, what we can do, though, is just like we've done this problem before, we can draw a picture. Opposite is x, and hypotenuse is 1, so this is the square root of 1 minus x squared. This over here as well, we have x is the adjacent, 1 is the hypotenuse, and the square root of 1 minus x squared. So if I want the cosine of this... I'm going to have x squared, cosine of this is going to be plus the square root of 1 minus x squared over 1, the sine of whatever this is, which is going to be times the square root of 1 minus x squared over 1, and when I put these together, the square roots are going to be squared and cancel, so I end up with x squared times 1 minus x squared, and x squared... So we end up with this, I'm sorry, not, it'd be plus here in the middle. So you end up with a positive x squared and a negative x squared, cancel out, you're left with 1. So the idea here is, use your property, then draw the triangle for alpha, draw the triangle for beta, and do the cosine or sine inverse as necessary. Just as we can simplify, we can also verify. So... What we're going to do now is we're going to verify that this side equals this side. First of all, we're going to put this into a sum difference. Then it says cosine pi. I don't know what I can do with cosine theta, but I can definitely find cosine of pi. Well, here's 180, negative 1 for the adjacent, 1 for the hypotenuse, 0 for the opposite. Cosine of pi is going to be negative 1 times cosine theta plus sine of pi. Well, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. That's going to be 0 times sine theta that's going to go away. You have negative cosine theta equals negative cosine theta. And it'll work the same way as if we were solving. So simplify, verify, solve, all using sum and difference. You need to be able to work the problems forward. You need to be able to work the problems backward. So both forward and backward for the sum and difference properties. All right.